Hey hey, this is Jonas making video games with you and this video is basically part 2 of the video I did yesterday. So go watch that first. There are absolutely massive problems with Ovis Nova that we need to address now. So this is the feedback from last time, I think we can take that down. So what I usually do now is I just grab some more little paper sheets and try to come up with a solution, write them down there and put them next to uh, those cards. The game is lacking tension and watchability, hmm. what can we do about that? As I said, these problems are way tougher than last time. <laughs> what we could do is try to add fog of war, so you only see a certain radius around your units. Uh, if you want to know what's going on on the map, then you have to spread your creatures on the map. I always draw little icons on my cards because that makes it way easier to see the entire image when you have them here. You don't have to read everything, you don't have to read every single line of text. You can, can see the bigger picture way easier just by drawing little icons on your cards. Okay, I came up with some solutions, let me show you. The game's lagging tension, watchability. So what we could do is Fog of War, already told you about that. Those are some pretty massive changes, so <laughs> be prepared for that. We could go from a level-based system to a roguelike system. And it's randomly generated, it's different every time random stuff is happening. You have random upgrades, maybe you have a couple of different ones you can choose from. Random events that can happen, that mix things up a little. Obviously stuff like that can make it a little unfair, but in the end, if the game benefits from that, who cares. A main reason why it's so boring to watch is because the game is so insanely slow, especially with the pause function, so I think we could do something like if you use the speed up function, that makes the game run with four times the speed, you get extra resources that motivates you to be a little quicker and not mess around. And then the same for pausing, we could make pausing a special ability that costs resources to activate. So not a lot of resources, just a couple, so that you don't use it all the time, you can still use it quite often, but just something that stops you from hitting pause over and over again, because that makes the game just uh, very boring to watch. Here, going to a roguelike system, it's probably the most drastic change, but I think we could make the game way more interesting. What do you think? Do you think those changes might work? I don't know. And then the next problem is here. The optimal strategy is way too obvious, you can't get creative. And my favorite thing to do when that happens is I just look at what is the optimal strategy, what is the player doing all the time, and then I try to encourage players to do exactly the opposite, which usually works out pretty well. Currently the problem is that the optimal strategy is to get as greedy as possible with your eggs, to create as many eggs as possible. And I have a, I think I found a way to counteract that. We just reward different things with our resources. Currently we reward detonating units, but why don't we reward simply not turning your units into eggs? So you get resources for every unit that is flying around, so you get resources if you neither detonate them nor turn them into eggs. If you have just idle units flying around, which is usually what you don't want to have, that's what you get resources from and that, I think, makes everything a little more interesting. I don't want to have abilities anymore, so abilities that allow you to manipulate the game while it's going on, but turn the resources into a progress bar like this, so you collect resources and resources whenever you have idle units. This bar here fills up and when the bar is full, then you can select between maybe three, four, five different upgrades and those upgrades have a drastic impact on everything, so that's where a lot of strategic choice comes into play and where you can try different builds. You can only select one of them, all the others are gone, so that should make for an interesting choice. I think those two will fix those two problems quite well. There's still the most dominant problem though, which will be the hardest one to fix and which will require the most redesign probably, and that's you don't understand what the hell is going on. Sure, if somebody explains the game to you, you get it, you can totally understand it, but if you just see somebody play, you have no idea what's going on and that's actually a pretty important factor. When you see the game the first time, it's probably not gonna be the case that somebody's there to explain the game to you, so you have to figure it out yourself. You don't even understand the two factions are fighting each other. Some people look at it and they have no clue what's going on, they don't know what the goal of the player is. And if you're that clueless, then watching isn't any fun and you also don't feel motivated to <laughs> try the game or learn anything more about it. Actually, let's let's talk about the solutions I came up with. We need to make it look like war. Because people know how war works, two factions fight against each other and the goal is 
to win the war and to defeat the enemy. And then another one is you need to know exactly who the good guys are. So currently both alien factions kind of look ugly, weird, creepy and you can't really identify with any one of them. And the problem with that is you don't really know which side to cheer for if you first see the game, you have absolutely no clue. Is the player controlling the orange ones? Is the player controlling the blue ones? And that's kind of hard to figure out, we need to fix that. And I think another good way to differentiate those two factions from each other is to make one of them biological and one of them robotic and technical. It's a, a lot more cliche, but you know they hate each other, you know they want to destroy each other. And if you just see weird aliens, you don't really know, uh, are they working together, are they fighting each other, what the hell is going on. And I think people understand the conflict between robots and biological stuff a lot better because it has been done a lot more often. The next problem is you don't really understand what you can do. And what I need to do or can do about that is I just need to do a better job explaining it. And I also thought about making a little mini tutorial at the start of each level. So whenever you start a level, you have a three second countdown. Three! Two, one. And while this countdown is going on, you can have, could have a, have a little tutorial, a little blend in, or a little animation that shows you your two main interactions, duplicating, detonating. And this way, if you let's play the game or if you stream the game, you don't have to constantly explain the game to your viewers, but viewers can hopefully just get the main mechanics of the game by watching the game because the game explains it every time you start a new level. Then another one, you don't know why your units explode. It's super unintuitive. Why should you make your own units explode? And actually, I think I have a really good fix for it. We just don't make the units explode. We just turn them into attack mode instead. And the way this works is if you swipe over them, they don't blow up. They just turn into that direction and start shooting for a while. And while they're shooting, they get smaller and smaller. So they, they're using up their energy. and. Essentially, it's, it does exactly the same thing. It deals damage in a certain direction. It's, that's exactly what the detonations did before. But I think it's a lot easier to understand. It looks a lot, lot more like war. Things are shooting at each other. People understand that. Okay, if they're shooting at each other, they probably don't like each other. If they just explode and blow up, then it's harder to understand what's going on. So I think this will be a good change to the understandability Then we have. You don't know how well the player is doing. And when you watch somebody play this, it's really cool to see, oh, they're so skilled, how can they do that? I want to try that as well. I think that's probably not something that's gonna happen with my game all that much because, yeah, it's a strategy game. It's hard to see how skilled players are. Maybe if you have very quick mouse movements, I don't know. That's probably not that big of a deal, so, and I also don't have a solution for it, so. Just left it blank, this problem, we'll see how that goes. And then the last one, why can your units touch enemies? Um, so those weird thingies are units and those are enemies. You might remember that your units can go over enemies. They can touch each other and they don't get hurt from that. Only your eggs get hurt when they touch enemies. That as well is a little unintuitive. So what we could do is we could just add a shield around units when they're flying around and your eggs don't have shields. People know what shields are, they know how shields work. So I think that's gonna be a lot more understandable. <sighs> yeah, all of this is gonna require a lot of redesigns. The game's gonna look a lot different when we're done with all of this. But I think it's necessary. What do you think? And I'm actually really happy I found out about them now and not in two months, in four months when I'm much further into the development. If you make a game, I can't recommend it enough. Get your game out there as early as possible. Get as much feedback as possible. Try to identify trends. What are people having troubles with? And then try to think about solutions. How can you fix it? Can you fix it? If you can't fix it, then maybe it's not the correct project. Maybe you have to choose a different project then. And that's why it's important to do that early, get a lot of feedback and get it as early as possible. Because otherwise I would have never found out about all of these problems and I think those are very serious problems that need to be addressed right away. What do you think about the ideas I talked about? Do you think this can work? <sighs> do you have any ideas how to fix those problems? Have you had similar problems in your games as well? Have you struggled with those same things? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this was interesting. Make the world your playground and see you in the next one. Peace out.